The M1 MacBook Air will be five years old this year. That's half a decade, or 1,571 days. It's lasted pretty well for that time, and I'll get into that later, but just how long is it going to be a usable computer for? Well, let's look at OS updates first, since Macs start prominently showing their age once Apple stops giving them updates. The M1 Air started off on macOS Big Sur, which dropped in 2020. It's been given every major macOS update since, with it now up to macOS Sequoia. We never get announcements from Apple regarding how long a device is going to be supported in the future. In fact, it's basically a guessing game until the event happens in mid-summer and the latest version of macOS is fully revealed. We can make some educated guesses though. Apple generally supports its Macs for between 5 and 8 years these days. The oldest supported Mac right now is the iMac Pro from 2017. Another macOS update will take it into its ninth year of support, which does seem pretty unlikely. If the iMac Pro isn't supported this year, there's a good chance the last few Intel Macs Apple released will be dropped in late 2025 or 2026. Once that happens, the M1 line of Macs will very likely be next on the chopping block. So my prediction would be for the M1 MacBook Air to receive its last major update in late 2027, or possibly late 2028. Once your Mac is unsupported by the latest version of macOS, Apple tends to give it minor security updates for the next two to three years. So again, it's just an educated guess, but I think updates will cease entirely by about 2030, five years from now. Right now you can get an unsupported Mac like the 2012 MacBook Pro and patch it all the way up to the latest version using the OpenCore Legacy Patcher. That only works for x86 based machines currently though, and Apple Silicon Macs are all based on ARM architecture. We're yet to see whether a patching tool like OCLP is going to be created for M1 and later Macs, because there's obviously not a need for anything like that yet. Such a tool will no doubt work very differently on Apple Silicon though. The T2 chip, as well as the complete shift to ARM-based processors, mean newer Macs don't boot into macOS the same way most of the Intel ones did. I think a method will be worked out somehow eventually, but I'm no expert. Only time will tell. Anyway, macOS support isn't the only metric by which we can measure the lifetime of this M1 MacBook Air. How long is the performance of this thing going to hold up for? Well, right now I have to say the M1 Air is still immensely powerful. It was a humongous jump in performance from the Intel MacBooks Apple had released before and even alongside the 2020 M1 lineup. In Geekbench 6, the M1 Air's processor beats the biggest and most powerful Intel MacBook by over 60% in single-core performance. The multi-core benchmark shows a difference of just over 40%, which is still a pretty big achievement. In the real world though, the difference is just as perceptible. This MacBook is able to crush my video edits impressively well, despite not even having a cooling fan on board, which is more than I can say of the 16-inch 29 MacBook Pro I had before it. It's not all good news in 2025 though. First things first, Apple have created some super powerful chips over the last five years that are able to beat M1 by some margin. M2 and M3 might not have changed the game entirely, but the more recent M4 chip is pretty close to doing so. Going back to Geekbench 6, we can see that M4 is well over 60% better than M1 across the board of benchmarks. It's not super easy to notice in the real world yet, since both processors are able to handle software like Premiere Pro and Logic with ease right now. Apps like those will start to take advantage of the better performance of M4 and above in the near future though. The 2012 MacBook Pro used to handle video editing just fine, but video editing software has changed and it's not usable for that kind of thing anymore. It happens to all computers eventually, and slowly the MacBook Air M1 will become less usable for high caliber things like video edits. As I mentioned though, it is a real powerhouse for its size, and I would give it another 5 years or so before video editing, music production, and that kind of thing become difficult for most people to use it for. That's just my opinion, anyway. So I've gone into CPU performance already, which is very solid. GPU performance on the M1 MacBook Air is a bit more shaky though. It was never intended to be a graphics powerhouse, and it only has a basic 7 or 8 core GPU inside. If you need this laptop for 3D designing, or even playing games on, you're already out of luck to be honest. M1 Pro, Max, and Ultra computers are far more capable when it comes to graphics. I'm not saying the M1 MacBook Air won't be able to run basic UI animations built into macOS in the future, but the GPU is a weak point on this laptop, and it's only going to seem weaker from this point onwards because of how good other Macs are now in comparison. 
So unfortunately, the M1 MacBook Air is part of the era of Macs that have almost no repairability and no upgradability at all. If you break the screen on this machine, it's an expensive part to source. More importantly though, replacing the screen is so hard to do that it's genuinely risky to do yourself. The worry is that you might cause more damage to the computer and incur extra costs. The SSD and all major internals are also soldered to the motherboard and can't be taken out if one fails. Your SSD more than likely will fail at some point once it sees enough use or for any number of other reasons. This could happen in 5, 10 or 20 years. If it does, you can't take the SSD out and fit a new one in. Your data is gone forever and realistically the entire laptop becomes scrap. It doesn't seem right, but the M1 MacBook Air is very much a disposable piece of technology. Eventually a part will fail and it will be prohibitively expensive or impossible to replace. Obviously, I can't tell you when that'll happen, but it does mean your laptop isn't going to be physically able to last more than 10 or 15 years, because with regular use, that's about when the SSDs do start to fail. So, we've looked at software support, compared performance to newer Macs, and identified what might cause the death of it. But how does the M1 MacBook Air perform right now? Well, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The M1 MacBook Air is one of the very best value Macs money can buy right now. From the start, it was an underdog impressing people with great performance for under $1,000, but it's available now for roughly $400 used. For your money, you're getting a laptop still capable of video editing with absolutely no slowdowns at 1080p. With a few hitches here and there, it works as a 4K editing machine too. I've never had any latency using Logic Pro, so again, it makes a great music production computer. Photoshop 2025 also runs flawlessly on this thing. I put several projects with several layers on this thing every week when I'm creating thumbnails. Web browsing and document work in apps like Microsoft Word and Excel is absolutely fine too, and the battery life really is stellar. The one thing I will say though is having a 13 inch screen does hold me back a little bit no matter what I do on this laptop. I'd love to get a 15 or 16 inch MacBook one day, but the price is a limiting factor considering they cost double what this M1 Air does. A lot of people are in the same situation, and honestly, the display is still excellent on this laptop. The resolution of 2560 by 1600 is pretty much perfect for the size of it, and the colours are super impressive, and bright enough almost anywhere. The speakers on board this thing are surprisingly good considering their size too. So there you go, the M1 MacBook Air is still a great laptop for $400 or so in 2025. I have no doubt it will begin to slow down a bit over the next few years, especially since M4 has come along. There's no way this thing won't be usable past 2030 for most people though, as software support will almost certainly continue for a good few more years, like I mentioned. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you also to my Patreon members who help support the channel financially. You can join them at the link in the description from 2 dollars also linked in the description is the What's On Your Screen Discord server. There we talk about Macs, old and new, and really most computers. Jump in if you want to be part of the discussion.